Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. We have a special guest here. If you're tuning in, you can see him. It is my dog. We are in a new spot. We have surrounded ourselves with greenery because we are embracing the changing season. As I've talked about before, I do love the sweet, spooky stuff. I have a pumpkin over my shoulder, but what I don't really love is the spooky, scary stuff. So as long as I steer clear of that, I'm pretty, pretty happy for this season, as is my dog but today we don't want to talk about the dogs or halloween or anything i mean i do but what i want to really focus on is trucking and trucking in the ev space so specifically i want to start out with just the magnitude of the trucking industry trucking moves roughly 72.6 percent of the nation's weight by freight in the u.s there are more than 3.5 million truck drivers that were employed in 2022 this was an increase of 1.5 percent from 2021 so it's becoming actually a more popular industry and i just wonder how the influence of evs will just kind of improve the the lifestyle the uh, work environment and experience for people on the road and if it'll just be interesting to be a part of not only a huge industry but an industry that is embracing new technology so about 90 940.8 billion in gross freight revenues primarily shipments only came from trucking and that represented 80.7 percent of the nation's freight bill in 2022. Additionally of course while freighting moves a lot of uh important things around and trucking you know gets things to where they're going and contributes to revenue it is a pretty costly industry as well and fuel represents up to 39 percent of a fleet's cost per mile according to the american transportation research institute a single commercial truck running a hundred thousand miles a year at seven miles per gallon can consume up to seventy thousand dollars in fuel a year so maybe that sounds reasonable i mean it has to run on fuel but how could evs come into play and of course the ev semis are going to be quite a hefty investment up front but will they pay off in the long term we'll be around to see there's also been more and more pressure from environmental agencies to decrease the impacts of medium and heavy duty vehicles on the road and while heavy duty vehicles make up just 10 percent of the vehicles on the road they generate more than 25 percent of the total global warming emissions from the transportation sector and that is the sector that is already the biggest contributor to global warming emissions so a pretty high proportion of the impacts from greenhouse gases and transportation is from this trucking industry but it is also a huge part of our economy so what are we going to do about it Well, we better be doing something about it because the EPA, for instance, this year announced that they have a proposal for more stringent standards to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the heavy duty vehicles beginning in model year 2027. So what are we seeing so far? That's what I want to talk about today. So Mercedes-Benz Trucks has officially debuted their e-Actro 600 at the Brake Autohof Hamburg Nordheide in Eggestorf, Germany. How did I do with that? Now, this is not their first big rig EV news. And in fact, they had their concept out before Tesla unveiled theirs. And they've been testing this specific one, which you may have seen, driving it in extreme heat in Spain and extreme cold in Finland and really giving it a go before this global unveiling of the E Actros 600. So I'm not sure of the pricing and the goal of this is to replace the majority of diesel trucks in the future. That's from Mercedes and Daimler. So let's look at it here. I'm going to bring up some photos so you can see this semi or Tory if we're if we're being international. So you can see here, if you're tuning in online, that it has, um, it doesn't come to a point, you know, like typical semis, not even like the Tesla semi. And in fact, it has more of this chopped, rounded off front hood. It has this underbody paneling. It has extended flaps influenced by sails and LED headlamps and a light strip. You know, it looks nice. It doesn't look super unfamiliar to the way that we know semis look. And they've actually extended the front here by 80 millimeters for this new cab, the Pro Cabin, as they're calling it, in an effort to increase Increase the aerodynamics in the vehicle from their first iteration. So they are currently building a fleet of 50 of these e 600s that are bound for practical testing with the first customers. Who are they? I have to know. I'm very curious who will be the first customers. We know Pepsi went for Tesla, but what about who will be the first customers for these e 600s? I wonder if it'll be a European company. So the battery pack has over 600 kilowatt hours, hence the name e 600. 
three battery packs, each with 270 kilowatt hours using lithium iron phosphate cell technology. So they report an estimated range of 500 kilometers without intermediate charging, which is about 310 miles. And they go on to say that drivers could cover more than a thousand kilometers or more than six, 620 miles a day with the intermediate charging, if that was in, you know included in the drive. And they say this will be possible even without megawatt charging, which is interesting. So they note that about 60% of long haul trucking in Europe goes for lengths shorter than 500 kilometers, meaning that some may not even need to charge to get to their destination, but on the way back, probably. Um, but of course, there's still these longer hauls that have to be considered and they will require extended public charging infrastructure with not only just faster chargers, but also the megawatt charging does seem to be key in the future of really scaling this. But Mercedes has said that they'll be enabling megawatt charging in the future, but customers can have this pre-installed at point of sale. So interestingly, these e-actro 600 semis would only be retrofitted with the MCS technology when one, it becomes available, and two, when it is standardized across manufacturers. At that point, with the trucks enabled, and the infrastructure in place, the company states that the batteries can go from 20 to 80% on a charge in 30 minutes with a one megawatt output. So it's important to remember that when considering trucking and charging, that truckers are regularly, legally required to take rest breaks. Like our pilots, they have to have a certain amount of rest that goes in. Of course, there's a huge safety concern. And so these charging stopovers will now, they'll just really, I think, need to replicate the experience that truckers have already showers food all those amenities that are necessary when you're making a bit of a stopover not only for rest but of course if you're charging your ev tory so a little bit more about the e actra 600 so they're going to begin selling these by the end of this year 2023 with the start of the series production planned for the end of next year 2024 and they are being assembled in rhine germany they have a payload of roughly 22 tons or a gross of up to 44 tons they have this predictive powertrain control, cruise, and transmission control, an electric drive axle that was developed in-house with 800-volt architecture with two e-motors and a four-speed transmission specifically for that heavy-duty use. The motors have a continuous output of 400 kilowatts with a peak of 600 kilowatts, and that is reported full motor availability most of the time. So you can get that acceleration most of the time. The driver can use one pedal as well if they wish and there are some other options for driving uh, applications so they've also included details about some things of concern or just like curiosity when you're talking about long hauls and these deliveries and transporting a lot of important freight then sometimes it needs to be refrigerated so they have um, provided a dc or ac power takeoff and depending on the application it could provide power range of up to 22 to 90 kilowatts to you know, do those other requirements that you need in these long haul trucking situations. And of course, there's a lot of cool software going on here, including the Multimedia Cockpit Interactive 2. So this is a standard install in the eActro 600, and it is a charge management system that includes info about charging and uh, your state of charge, your consumption of energy, how your driving's going. So as a trucker, you can monitor that, um, your energy consumption, the details on uh, charging, standing, and driving times. And also there is this mapping tool where, you know, if you have a fleet, you can show a location of all the vehicles, their battery state of charge, and their status of motion, whether they're parked, charging, or moving. And there's tons of safety features as well. They go into great detail. So it's a pretty interesting press release. They do include a lot of information about these EVs, which I really enjoyed reading. And um, like I said, a ton of safety features to, to look out for those typical um, stationary or moving obstacles or situations that semis come in contact with on the daily. And of course, we're thinking about safety. These are giant vehicles moving on the road and a lot of assisted driving features. So I think that's great. Uh, more initiatives and safety, the better. And we'll see how that kind of, you know, more, more of that self-driving capability coming in or at least safety equipped capabilities. And Overall, yeah, this is an effort from Daimler and Mercedes-Benz trucks to create a heavy-duty EV focused on technology, sustainability, design, and profitability, of course. And they report that compared to the diesel Actros, um, the E-Actros 600 will save 370 tons of CO2 or 775 tons of CO2 if it were powered by renewable energies, which is, of course, a dream, uh, not quite a reality yet, but... 
pretty cool to see it. Um, I love more, you know, competition in terms of the EV space and I'm really excited to see these on the road. Let me know what questions you have. It was a, a long detailed report. So I kind of cherry picked the, the content that was interesting to me, but happy to have more conversations in the comments and let me know who you think might be the first customers. Do you think it'll be European? I'm kind of leaning that way, you know, just by the nature of things, but maybe it'll be in the US too. I'm not sure exactly when these will be in North America or the price interested in that um, to see, you know, really how this will be able to um, not only be afforded by freight liners, uh, but also uh, when it will pay off. And I did want to note that in North America, Freightliner, the, the company expects 30% of their medium and heavy duty trucks to operate on batteries by the end of the decade. So we're totally seeing a shift over in the heavy duty vehicle world. And I am really excited to see this change. This is a huge impact on our environment. And the more and more technology we'd have to like combat this and also the charging infrastructure, it'll be interesting to see how these come along. But Anyways, that is the update on the Mercedes-Benz truck EV, the E-Actro 600. Again, let's have a conversation in the comments. And of course, if you've enjoyed this or you've even watched two of the podcasts, why not subscribe? It helps us. It doesn't hurt you. And we will continue to make content that is of interest to us all. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a great day. And I will see you next time on the Out of Spec Podcast.